Hello everyone, Anthony McMillan here, Latasha McMillan here, here once again on what did Jesus say, and this time we're talking about what did Jesus say about being religious, um, that is a, a, a big thing for the church today, you know, uh, just being in the word lately, we've just been running across when it comes to having these religious spirits and just religious mm -hmm. attitudes about things. Yeah. So we're going to uh, go to Matthew 23, and we're going to read what Jesus has said unto the Pharisees and Sadducees about being religious. All right. And then Jesus said to the crowds and to his followers, the teachers of the law and the Pharisees have the authority to tell you what the law of Moses says. You should obey and follow whatever they tell you, but their lives are not good examples for you to follow. They tell you to do things, but they themselves don't do them. They make strict rules and try to force people to obey them, but they are unwilling to help those who struggle under the weight of their rules. They do good things so that other people will see them. They enlarge the little boxes holding scriptures that they wear, and they make their special prayer cloths very long. Those Pharisees and teachers of the law love to have the most important seats at feasts and in the synagogues. They love people to greet them with respect and in the marketplaces, and they love to have people call them teacher. But you must not be called teacher because you have only one teacher, and you are all brothers and sisters together. And don't call any person on earth father because you have one father who is in heaven. And you should not be called master because there is only one master, the Christ. Whoever is your servant, whoever is your servant is the greatest among you. Whoever makes himself great, will be made humble and whoever makes himself humble will be made great so basically what he's saying here is that these people are doing so much they're going over and beyond for recognition of man they don't have no relationship with god they look and appear as they have a relationship with god but they are full of pride is what it sounds like he's saying to me at this so whoever makes himself great will be made humble they're full of pride they want to be seen they yeah. want to be looked upon and is it when he talking about don't call yourself teacher don't call someone father don't call someone master now we know there are spiritual fathers you know mm -hmm. we know teachers are part of the fivefold ministry yeah uh so but what he's saying here don't ex ex exalting yourself into a position that you're not able to truly fulfill yourself that's it that's it because a lot of people will give themselves a title and don't fulfill it in any way shape or form that's it that's absolutely correct and then i mean not talking bad about the Catholic Church, but even with the Catholic Church, you see that they're called Father, and yeah. then um, people have to go to the Father to confess their sins and that you know, and it's just that place yeah, that's is not your position. It's not your place in your True. position to that degree. Okay, let's continue reading. He says to them, "How terrible for you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You close the door for people to for people to enter the kingdom of heaven, and you yourselves don't enter, and you stop others who are trying to enter." How terrible for you, teachers of the law and Pharisees. You are hypocrites. You take away widows' houses and you say long prayers so that people will notice you. So you don't. So you will have a worse punishment. How terrible for you, teachers of the law and Pharisees. You hypocrites. You travel across land and sea to find one person who will change your ways. And when you find that person, you will make him more fit for hell than you are. How terrible for you. You guide the people, but you are blind. You say if people swear by the temple, then they will make a promise. That means nothing. But if they swear by the gold that is in the temple, they must keep that promise. You are blind fools. Which is greater, the gold or the temple that makes that gold holy? And you say if people swear by the altar when they make a promise, that means nothing. But if they swear by the gift on the altar, they must keep that promise. That's crazy. Yes, it is. You are blind. Which is greater, the gift? Or the altar that makes the gift holy. The person who swears by the altar is really using the altar and, al and also everything on the altar. And the person who swears by the temple is really using the temple and also everything in the temple. The person who swears by heaven is also using God's throne and the one who sits on that throne. How terrible for you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You give one tenth of everything you earn, even your mint, dill, and coming. But you don't obey the really important teachings of the law, justice, mercy, and being loyal. These are the things you should do as well, as well as those other things. You guide the people, but you are blind. 
You are like a person who picks a fly out of a drink and then swallows a camel. How terrible for you teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You wash the outside of your cups and dishes, but inside they are full of things that you got by cheating others and pleasing only yourselves. Pharisees, you are blind. First make the inside of the cup clean and then the outside of the cup will be clean also. How terrible for you teachers of the law and Pharisees. You hypocrites. You are like tombs that are painted white outside. Those tombs look fine, but inside they are full of bones of dead people and all kinds of unclean things. It is the same with you. People look at you and think that you are good, but on the inside you are full of hypocrisy and evil. How terrible for you, teachers of the law and Pharisees. You are hypocrites. You build tombs for the prophet and you show honor to the graves of those who lived good lives. You say if we... You say, if we had lived during the time of our ancestors, we would have not helped kill them, kill the prophets. But you give proof that you are descendants of those who murdered the prophets and you will complete the sin that your ancestors started. You snakes, a family of poisonous snakes. How are you going to escape God's judgment? So I tell you this, I am sending to you prophets and wise men and teachers. Some of them you will kill and crucify. Some of them you will beat in your synagogues and chase from town to town. So you will be guilty for the death of all the good people who have been killed on earth. From the murder of that good man Abel to the murder of Zechariah, son of Berechiah, whom you murdered between the temple and the altar. I tell you the truth. All these things will happen to you who are living now. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you kill the prophets and you stone to death those who are sent to you. Many times I wanted to gather your people as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you did not let me. Now your house will be left completely empty. I tell you, you will not see me again until that time when you say, God bless the one who comes in the name of the Lord. This is very, very powerful. And to me, it's kind of scary because there are so many people who are operating in religion and they really don't have a relationship. And so many people are deceived by them because they look good on the outside, but on the inside, they are nothing of God, nothing of God. So it's very important. And then when we see here, Jesus talks, I mean, they were willing to give one tenth of everything they owned. They're meant coming and deal. They were willing to go out to evangelize. You know, they went out, they put in the work. So, I mean, they were putting in works that looked righteous. But in the eyes of God, it wasn't a mountain for nothing. So how many times today we see in the church people who dressed apart, looked apart, mm-hmm. but. When it comes down to really living it, it's not who they it's are. It's not who they are in any way, shape, or form. And, and, and we're not just talking about pastors and preachers and stuff. Yeah. And we're talking about anybody in today's who is in a leadership position mm-hmm. especially. But anyone who calls themselves a believer, period. Yeah. Like if you're not living it, like you said, when it comes to the cup, yeah, you can dress the part, but inside you, you are just so dirty. Mm-hmm. And it's like... Allow the Holy Spirit to cleanse you from the inside first, and then the outside will be so much more obvious clean. Yeah. Um, and you just think about like, and, and people are just afraid to just go this far in when it comes to these scriptures, when it comes to Matthew 23. Yeah. If you look at the, the Pharisees, and said, they didn't like Jesus in the first place yeah. already. So you can just imagine how they felt after he said all of this to them. But he was just telling the truth, like, yeah. get yourselves right. Yeah. That's really what he was telling. You're hypocrites right now. Yeah. You're nothing but hypocrites. That's right. And then the thing, you know, he, he also told the people and his disciples, you know, it's right for you to do what they tell you to do because what they're telling you to do is right. right. Just don't follow yeah. their example. Don't be like them because they tell you to do it, but they themselves don't do it. And that's another reason why, you know, going back to the video we recorded before, no fruit. You need to know the fruit you know, of, of the people that you're dealing with. But um, it is it can be a dangerous thing. Religion, if you're not careful, it is easy, it's very easy to get into religion. You know, Jesus told the woman at the well, there's coming a time when they that worship me will worship me in spirit and in truth. If it ain't spirit and it ain't truth, then it ain't life and it mm-hmm. ain't God. You know, um, when the Holy Spirit comes in you and you're born again, man, the evidence is obvious it's very very obvious obvious. and we were talking earlier how jesus told 
the Pharisees, you know, they they were religious people, people that looked the part, looked the role. But he told them that the Pharisees, he told them that the prostitutes and the tax collectors were entering the kingdom of God before they were, you know. And um, the conclusion to that was that because when it comes to when you think about a lot of people who just grew up in a church and the church all the time, mm -hmm. you know, they've seen and been a part of a religious spirit already, you know. And, but when it comes to people who were not a part of the church really at all and just lived in the world, when they repent, they repent. They go all out. They truly turn their hearts. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, it's just it's always the heart of a matter thing. Like, if you're going to say you, you're a Christian, be a Christian. Be a, a follower of Christ, you know, uh, because we the church is just doing so much damage to itself Yeah, saying that we're this, but then we look like the rest of the world. Yeah. And so, um, the whole point here is don't get into religion. And if you, you are into religion, let it go. As Jesus said, you know, the weight of religion is heavy, but the burden that he gives you and the load that he gives you to carry is light. His yoke is easy. You know, it shouldn't be hard. I was telling my husband earlier, there's sometimes when certain things are going on and I feel a heaviness in my spirit about it and it's supposed to be the things of God. I know that religion is very close, you know, because when you're in Christ, there's a peace that comes about the things of God. But if I find myself fighting with certain things, then I know there's a religious spirit behind it and it's something that I'm going to stay away from. So be careful today of that religious spirit is definitely in the atmosphere is definitely in the air It's amplifying itself in church today. Um, Spirit, truth, and life is what's of God, is what's of Christ, and is what's required. Other than that, he don't accept it. Religion is not acceptable in the eyes of God. You have to have a relationship. So if a religious spirit is upon you, you know that what you've been doing is not spirit. You know it's not truth, and you've been doing it because you're familiar with it. It's probably a religious spirit. Repent of it, get before God, ask for the help of the Holy Spirit, and let him deliver you from that spirit. Amen? Amen. So until next time, guys. Remember what Jesus said, and we will see you next video. Bye. Right. Bye-bye.